Hello and welcome to Tuesday Newsday, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. As you can tell, it's not exactly Tuesday. So look, some pretty crazy things happened in my life very recently. My upload schedule has been pretty bad and all of this boils over to just being so busy with actual work and life and this channel that all of it's kind of suffered. So I'm taking a leap right now and doing what I really love and that's making videos for this channel about VR and working towards building my Twitch. I just really want to see if I can make this work. So I'm opening up a Patreon. I really didn't want to, but circumstances regarding my day job have kind of changed. So if you want to support the channel, me, my Twitch, and get some really cool insight into stuff I'm doing, some behind the scenes stuff, I'd be more than grateful. And I'd really like to offer some cool stuff there. If you don't want to or can't, that's totally fine too. You just being here watching and being in the community means more than the world to me. So for now, three Twitch streams a week Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday, unless I'm gone for a convention or an event or something. So let's get back to the consistent videos and let's just kill it. And now, on to the news. Varjo, an XR hardware developer, recently announced that two new headsets will be coming available to the market right now. Now, let me just run down the list of things that these two headsets, the Varjo VR2 and VR2 Pro, offer and why it's newsworthy and important to us. Then we'll talk about the price. So, first of all, these headsets are completely Steam VR compatible, which makes sense. It's a good platform that is already established and working well, that's easy to publish to and work with. That also means that these headsets technically work with all of your current Steam VR software. Specification wise, they both push 4K rendered video to two 1920x1080 micro OLEDs in addition to two 1440x1600 AMOLEDs, almost totally and completely eliminating the screen door effect, which apparently gives the clearest visuals ever seen in a VR headset, unlike what some people have to say about the Vive Cosmos. Here is a direct comparison between the Vive Pro and the VR2. Looks pretty crisp if you ask me. Both rock in 90Hz and dual lenses. But here is where the really cool thing lies. There's built in eye tracking that in conjunction with Varjo's bionic display, whatever that marketing term means, allows you to have high precision eye tracking to keep those render costs low. But wait, there's more. Using Ultra Leap, previously known as the Leap Motion, this headset also has fully built in actual pretty accurate hand tracking using two cameras, LEDs, and an IR sensor. So let me get this straight. You can have this crystal clear VR image that isn't that expensive to process due to the eye tracking, have hand tracking, and sit in a cockpit with no controllers and fly this plane? Well, I think you know already, but this headset is not intended for us gamers or consumers, although you can very well go out and buy one and use a set of index controllers and it'll work just fine with all of your Steam VR content, at least according to Varjo. But it not being really for us is probably why nobody is talking about it. And now we can discuss the price. So the VR2 costs $4,995 and the VR2 Pro costs almost $6,000. <laughs> Obviously, this is the best of the best, packed with all the cutting edge features that we want out of the current headsets. No corner was cut, actual leap motion hand tracking which has improved significantly over the past few years, real eye tracking, multiple displays that offer the great colors of OLED without the screen door of one, and of course the price tag to go along with it. This is really just meant for the big companies that will use this headset as a tool, and maybe some VR chat or Pavlov on the side. But why we should be talking about it is because it's exciting to see that there's more than Oculus or Valve or Pimax or HTC making cutting edge moves in VR. 
And all these features that sound crazy is certainly a snapshot into what consumer headsets can be and will be. It's no coincidence that Oculus is bringing hand tracking to the Quest. I mean, yeah, we're all excited about it, but it's the enterprise segment that really wants it. So of course we reap the benefits of the push for VR in the enterprise world and the feature set that they require. Same thing with HTC working with companies to develop cheap eye tracking solutions for their headsets. Enterprise wants it and we reap all the benefits. So really, while it would make absolutely no sense to go out and buy this thing, I mean the field of view is only around 90 degrees for Pete's sake, it's exciting to look at the top of the line and see what our own headsets will be like in the near future as tech gets cheaper and the demand in the consumer market grows. That was a little heavy, maybe a little ranty, so how about we get on to a little meme break? It looks like researchers at the California Polytechnic State University are developing an immersive VR massage parlor to train police officers in identifying illegal touchy activities taking place in those places of business. Currently, in order to train in those scenarios, the PD usually build an actual massage parlor set and hide evidence for investigators to find. So obviously this has its cost benefits, but I have one word of advice. If you want true VR immersion, drop the those Vive Wands and get some knuckles so you could really see where those fingers are going. <laughs> and back to the news. Google officially ended support of their phone-based VR platform Google Daydream just this past week, announcing that the Pixel 4 and Pixel 4 XL are not compatible with the Daydream headsets. In addition, they also stopped selling the headsets entirely the same day. A Google spokesperson said, quote, we are no longer certifying new devices, end quote. Apparently much of the reason is that mobile phone virtual reality is dying out. Consumers and enterprise are moving towards more powerful and capable VR solutions, which is great. I think phone VR was good two or three years ago just to give people a small taste of what VR can offer, but it also turned a lot of people off due to the platform just being limited and even motion sick inducing due to the lack of real six off tracking. So yeah, push people towards things like the Oculus Quest, a far better platform for first time VR experiences. I'd even argue that even if you've tried phone VR, that some Something like a Quest would still be your first VR experience, but I digress. Sony's recent patent award shows off some very interesting mix of tracking techniques, as well as a totally new design for their inevitable PC VR 2 headset. Of course, as always, patents could be something or they could mean nothing, so grab you a pinch of salt if you're excited about anything here. And we're talking cameras. Cameras everywhere. Two on the front of the headset, one on the back of the headset. Wait. One on the back of the headset? Why can't everyone get this right? All the crap that inside out tracking gets for not being able to track controllers behind your body would be completely gone. Anyways, three total cameras on the headset, one camera attached to the console, and another camera on each of the controllers, which is certainly interesting if you ask me. I mean, this controller design looks pretty awful, but these are just patent papers and none of this could even be utilized, so we'll just have to see. Staying on the note of Sony, recently at Ginza Sony Park in Tokyo, a new Ghostbusters themed augmented reality attraction has debuted along with a sort of surprise AR headset, similar to the HoloLens, but from Sony of course. Featuring some sort of wrist device that may serve to aid tracking, or may even be a haptic feedback device, as well as full hand tracking and 6 degrees of freedom head tracking. Really, no further information has been given from Sony on the headset, but it does look really cool, and it's got me wanting to get my hands on one to try out. Especially after testing other cool AR stuff like the HoloLens and the Nreal glasses, these AR headsets are planned to be used in other things like parks and museums in the future as well. And just a quick bit of gaming news, Asgard's Wrath has officially launched and whew, that's it's a good one could be one of the best and most immersive vr games that i've ever played at least in terms of a single player experience i totally recommend it it's been working well with revive as well so that's awesome i was going to do a smash or pass on it but when it launched that's kind of when everything blew up and fell apart so i didn't really have a chance to i will be doing one on stormland though so that'll be a good one to look forward to so yeah everyone it's great to be back and it feels even better to know that i have far more 
time to create content without the stress and loss of sleep and to bring some good stuff to you guys and gals. If you do want to, the Patreon link is in the pinned comment and description. If not, then that's totally fine too. You made it this far and I can more than consider you a true thrill seeker. You'll also find my Twitch there and I will be streaming tonight. So stop by and we'll talk about some things that I went over today. Or you could just come along for the ride of whatever shenanigans I get myself into. Well, that was the week's news. What do you think about PSVR's weird tracking pattern? Leave me a comment. I love seeing them and I love talking to you guys. I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it. Subscribe if you want more of this and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love. Thrill out.